Hello everybody, welcome to another YouTube video and this time it's be, it's gonna be pretty complex, I have to assume. We will talk about how to use measured data, measured touchstone file or more general touchstone files um, into a, how to bring them into a 3D simulation and I've been asked these questions a few times, mainly for common mode jog actually. In my example, I will use something a little bit simpler, but for common mode chalks, it's typically you get some vendor data or you get some measurement files, and then you would like to attach the model of the common mode chalk to your 3D simulation. And there is always the question how to do this? Should we put a port in series basically? So have a one port. Now, of course, for a common mode chalk, you would have two ports and four ports, but I simplify it today to one port. Uh, which is in series in the in the trace where you would like to connect your component or two ports to the reference. If you have a touchstone file, let's say now we go back to a two port touchstone file, because I think on a common mode joke example, things will become a little bit too complicated. So we do it simpler. We start with a very simple inductor, right? So of course I won't measure anything. I'm a simulation guy. So I can generate, of course, my touchstone file of an inductor here. Uh, that's how I did it. So basically from, from this very simple setup with a one micro Henry inductor, I export the touchstone file and I like to use this touchstone file later on a, on a 3D model, which will be just two traces and uh, it will be just one trace and the traces, I mean, I have ports referenced to, to, to a plane at the both ends and then I do this two different setups one with the one port in series and the other with the two ports and what I would like to point out here I mean I'm doing this in CSD uh, of course I'm a CSD guy but what I'm telling you here it's not only valid for CSD that's not a theory that CSD has came up with it's it's the behavior of S parameters and it's the referencing of S parameters. So this is also valid in, in other simulation tools. So let's go back to our inductor. If we have the inductor, of course, we get a bunch of S parameters. So do you the inductance, the transmission becomes lower. So this is 10 to 200 megahertz. Pretty obvious. And I set up now this model. I set up the model with the one port and I set the model up with two ports and we can compare what's happening. So this is the pure circuit inductor and the model with the one port and the model with two port you see the answer is almost the same so putting the putting the touchstone in these two ways for the one port i connect it like this basically i connect it to the port uh, three which is the port in the center and then short the other side so that's basically putting the inductor like this on the other one i have two ports and i connect the touchstone in between and that means like for the 3D simulation, it's like, I mean, only the 3D part captures the current going up to here, then at the cone, basically the current leaps out to the schematic and appears here. So it's jumping over this face, over this section. And it's not containing like the coupling, the capacitive coupling between the, uh, the port and the, and the reference. It doesn't make much of a difference as we can see. So, I mean, there is a slight deviation, but for somebody like running the simulation, you would accept this. this. This is fine. So things work very well. And as just as a cross check, I could, instead of putting the touchstone file onto the schematic, I can take this one port setup that I had and put, put the lumped element, which is the, which is contained inside the touchstone file, put, put it here. And then the response will also be the same. So all the settings, like when we select all four, they deliver the same results. So this is fine for the inductor itself. I can choose whatever setup, one port or two port. It will deliver the same values. But now the question is what happens with our more complex circuit? And I don't want to make it too complex. So I took the inductor and I built like a pie filter, right? So I have um, capacitors to ground, 10 nano, 10 nano, and the same inductor as I had before. And I export this into a touchstone file and do the same setup as we have seen. The one port where I connect the, the touchstone file, the two port touchstone file like this. It's symmetric, so it doesn't matter if two to one or one to two. And then I do the two port setup 
as here. And obviously the first thing when you see this setup, it should become clear that I have in the filter, I mean, like in S parameters, in a two port, you basically have three voltages, right? On a, the voltage between pin one and reference, the voltage between a voltage and current between pin two and reference, and then the voltage and current across the reference, which is symmetric because S21 and S12 for this circuit is symmetric. But it should be clear that the capacitance here between pin one and ground cannot exist in this setup because I have a port purely from the trace from here to here. So uh, I, the current cannot flow to the reference like it was defined in the filter. So with this thinking, you already can see that this one port setup will probably not work. And now we can check this result. So this is the pure circuit. And now we go to the touchstone two port which works very well. We get the same response. Of course, at higher frequency, there's a deviation. This is simply due to the due to the uh, physical behavior of the 3D structure. The traces that I have connected additionally to the filter will add inductance. That's why you see this roll off here. So that's the, but that's not our main main point. That's that's behaving fine. So the S to one of the filter looking the same for the circuit and for the touchstone file. But how does the S21 of the one port look like? Ooh, very different. So it behaves completely different. I mean, it was clear that we we cannot have this currents to ground with this one port setup. This 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 capacitors are basically not working. The problem is, or the problem, the theory or the mathematics of a circuit will still deliver a result to you. And I think what's really enlightening at this point is to understand how does the circuit simulator treat the setup that we have generated. This one port, this uh, touchstone one port, where we have a port like here and we have placed the, the touchstone in here. And in order to understand this, it's a uh, good, I mean, uh, the way I try to explain is I'm simply taking the circuit we have defined here and instead connecting the touchstone, I connect the circuit here, right? And this allows us to interpret what is happening. So this is the filter, basically, this is the content of the touchstone file. And I did the schematic, basically defining the way what happens when the touchstone style is attached. And we will see that the results calculated, uh, let's say I mean, the theory and the calculation is correct, but the overall the setup is really messy and gives you gives you this very misleading result. So what's happening, of course, is um, you see this ground. So that means these components are all connected together. So basically we have a setup like this. So that's what we have. That's the equivalent setup because this is this is the ground symbol. It's connected. But let's go back to the setup. And if you notice, one thing is that this capacitor at this port, it's connected to ground at both pins. So there is there will be no voltage across the capacitor and there will be no current across the capacitor. So that means that this capacitor is basically not present. Uh, we could remove it. And then this capacitor and this inductor they are both to ground, which we can translate actually. It's a setup like this. <laughs> so what we have is the inductor and the first capacitor in parallel. And this is how the current flows. And if we run this one, it's called lumped one port resulting, and we can compare it. So this is the touchstone with the one port and the lumped with one port resulting, you can see that's exactly the response. So it's it's really hard to understand, but you, your circuit has transformed into something very different and something for sure that you, you didn't want to have. So this is the resulting circuit, which you get when you use the one port. So it's clear that for for components which require, which have a capacitance to ground or whatever capacitance inductance to ground, when there is a current in the component which forms to ground, then you need the, the two port setup for a two port uh, touchstone. For components which only connect, 
like the inductor, which has no significant current to ground, which uh, where the current just goes through the component, you can choose the one port and the two port setup because sometimes the one port setup is really simpler. But for this particular component, like um, where, where we have a current to ground, you cannot choose the one port setup, you need the two port setup. And that can bring us back actually to the common mode choke and to issues when you have a measured file. So imagine you have measured the common mode choke like it's like it's shown on the picture with a solid ground plane below. So the capacitance from this uh, from this winding of the coil to the ground is included in your measurement. So that means you need for sure with the measurement file use the, the four port setup now, right? You have to reference each port to 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 your uh, reference plane. And this capacitance will be included. So now imagine, I mean, I, I know from customers who taking these files of the measured uh, uh, common mode choke with the plane and then would like to use it in a PCB where you have a cutout below the, below the uh, common mode choke. If you now do the four port reference, the capacitance which was included in the measurement will be also in your combined model where you combine the measurement with the 3D model. So you will get the wrong capacitance. The only remedy there is to measure the common mode choke without the capacitance. This also can explain why sometimes vendors of components will provide you a measured touchstone file and a spice file. And the spice file is often generated by fitting parameters on the, of the DUT, like fitting the parameters of the common mode choke and obtaining a, a spice circuit. So that means often that this capacitance which was measured in the, in the measurement included in the touchdown file will no longer be present in the, in the circuit file, in the, in the spice file, because the spice was generated more like a, a representative circuit or equivalent circuit of the common mode choke, while the measurement did include already the capacitance from the component to the reference plane, if the reference plane was included in the measurement. So in the end, um, the answer is it really depends what's inside the, the touchstone file, how the touchstone file was generated, how it's measured. This depends how, uh, if you can use it correctly, it will deliver the right results, or if you will have issues because then the contents, let's say, of the touchstone file just simply don't match the, the 3D setup you are having. So it's a pretty complex thing and I have to admit that uh, it took me long to, to understand this and I'm really happy that I can generate this video today. And my typical answer was always saying like, okay, it depends on the touchstone file and that is still the answer, it depends on the touchstone file. But I hope that in, in the video today, seeing these differences uh, of the where you have the current to ground or you don't have the current to ground and then seeing the difference between the one and two port setup. I hope that this really could help you understanding setting up your next simulation model. So hope you have enjoyed and till the next time. Bye bye.